Hey, 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 what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. So, I've got this thing here, and it's time to talk about it. So, you guys know what the deal is. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you click the bell. Select all, so that way you get notified whenever I put out my videos. Also, smash that thumbs up if you like the videos. Leave me some comments. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys got some advice for me, please drop those down there as well. I take all kinds of criticism, whether you like it or not. You know, I just, I take it, and then I try to apply it and make it better. So, with that being said, without further ado, let's jump into it, guys. It's July, Monster Bass time. Let's go. So, here we go. Like always, we have our manual that tells us what we need to know about these lures, the gear setups. Um, we even got the tips from the pros. We've got our moon phase here in the back. So that way you can plan your, your uh, fishing trips according to the moon phases. So that way you know when the best times to go out there and get those bites. Uh, this one has July and August lunar periods. So you, you can't go wrong with any of that stuff there. So we're going to jump into this box. It's July. If you're in the southern region, because I have the southern region box for July. Here where I live in Arkansas, we are going back and forth between some very, very hot days. And then we will have some like freakish rainstorms. And then we have hot days and then we have more rainstorms. This is probably one of the first summers that we've had like so much dang rain that is driving me crazy. Um, unfortunately, I have not been able to get back out on the water. Reasons being, maintenance on the boat that had me down for a while. Now I got to get some maintenance on the truck. I should have went and done that earlier today. I didn't. That's me. That's my fault. Um, just a lot of crazy things has been going on. And I, it's been keeping me off of the water. I have to do better about getting this stuff knocked out so that way I have more time to get on the water. Okay, so without further ado, when you open this booklet up, you will see the part where it says pointers from the pros. This month, we talked to Mark Rose. Mark Rose, he is a native here from Arkansas. He lives in Wynn, Arkansas. He fishes the Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour. Um, Mark Rose, is, he's actually one of my favorite guys to watch. One of the reasons he's one of my favorites, and it took me a while before I even realized this, he, um, he is a Strike King pro. I love Strike King baits. Like when I go to Bass Pro Shops or even um, Academy Sports to buy lures and stuff, I usually will gravitate towards the Strike King lures. So I love Strike King stuff. Mark Rose being a Strike King uh, pro fisherman. So he's up there on my list as one of my favorites. Plus, he, he's from Arkansas. He represents the same state that I live in. And sometimes you always have to go with um, your hometown hero, guys. Regardless of what sport it is, what team they might be playing for, they come from the same state that you live in. They are a representation of your state, and you should always uh, support those people. So I support Mark Rose being from Arkansas. Uh, not to mention, here's a fun fact. Um, he's from Wynn, Arkansas, which is where my great-grandfather uh, was from. So I thought that was pretty cool that this guy who lives in the city that my great grandfather was from. So in a weird way, I kind of feel like I have a connection with him because of that, even though me personally, I've never actually been, I've drove through Wynn. I've never actually been to Wynn, let alone live there. But I thought that was pretty cool that my great grandfather came from Wynn. And then we have Mark Rose here who lives there in that's what he claims is his hometown, so that's pretty awesome. So, we're going to jump right into this. Uh, what do we got here? So, it looks like we are throwing a jig. So, let's pull her out. And here we have a lifted jigs. Stand-up presentation has a 5 aught Ultra Point hook, 42 strands of premium skirt, chip-resistant paint. Uh, this one is a 3 8 ounce. Looks like it's a uh, 
green pumpkin with some purple strands in it and the head is painted purple almost like a PBJ color I'm trying to see if it actually says a color on here it doesn't say a color uh, so it's a pretty cool looking jig there nice looking jig actually I'm gonna throw this one guaranteed so you have a jig here where do you want to fish this it is a bottom lure you fish this on the bottom unless you're using a swimming retrieve then you can swim it back to you but you fish this around grass humps ledges two leaves or reeds brush piles open water rip raft points docks rocks and trees you cannot go wrong throwing a jig there is no right or wrong place to throw a jig the gear suggested for this is a 7-4 monster bass lunker stick I think my jig rod is a 7 foot medium heavy uh, 14 to 20 pound fluorocarbon 8 3 to 1 bait caster reel why do you want a high speed reel when you throw this jig out there and you're hopping it along or however you're working that lure and you get that bite but you miss you want to be able to reel up that line as fast as you can to make another cast or another pitch into that spot to get that bait back out there to get that fish. You don't want to take your time trying to get it back in. You don't want to have to power it in because you know you're gonna overwork your arm and wear yourself out. So you want to be able to get that line in as quick as possible to make another cast out there to get that lure back out to the to the fish very very cool lure I've caught a few fish uh, not exactly on this jig or this style of jig but I have caught fish on jigs it is an awesome bite to feel that thump on the line and it's really cool because when people's when, when we got them stuttering I'm getting so excited so when we describe a jig bite or even like a worm bite and you say you feel that thump or that doink it's not really so much like the fish actually hits it Okay. Now, sometimes if they if they swipe at it and then they'll actually hit it, but when we say you feel that, that thump or that, that doink, what's really happening is when that fish opens his mouth and sucks that water in, he sucks it in so fast that you're actually feeling the pull of that lure going so fast and it makes your line jump down, makes that rod jump, that when we describe it, you would think... Like, I have a box right here to the side of me. See this box right here? So, you would think that when we say, when you feel him hit it, you would think, and then that's the bite. But what's really happening is that fish opens his mouth so fast and sucks in that water that you're feeling the weight of that lure being sucked into that fish's mouth that it feels like a, a hit. And at that point, your rod has loaded up. Now, when you feel that, there's a couple of ways you can you can uh, help detect your bite. One way, as you're working that lure, and as soon as you feel that thump, you set. Okay? Um, I fished a tournament with my brother. We were on Arkansas River. I was throwing a swim jig, and I felt that thump, and I jerked on it, and I missed him, so I hurried up and reeled it in, threw it back out. As I'm working that lure again, I'm in the ready position. I got my rod out, and I'm working, and I'm working, working, just reeling. And I felt that thump again, and I came back. Set the hook on him, caught him. I, I want to say he was the first one that was a keeper size that I caught that day. And so that was an awesome bite. Now, sometimes you will feel that thump, and you're not really sure. So what you want to do is reel up your slack and just ever so lightly lift up on your rod. See if there's some pressure on there. If you feel that pressure pulling back down against you, or you might even feel your rod tip quivering, you've got him. Now you've already taken up your slack. Just go ahead and set back on him. Set that hook. You don't need to drop down because you might give that fish time to open his mouth and let it go. So if you're reeled up your slack and you're lifting up to feel that pressure and then you start to feel pressure pull back down or your rod tip is quivering, you know that the fish is on there, just come on back and start reeling. Set that hook and get them on in. So 
that's a little tidbit on you know jig fishing okay now we're going to talk about something that goes along with this we're going to talk about jig trailers okay we have two different packs in here that can be used as a jig trailer we have the big bite baits uh, sensations Uh, what is this called? Sensation Ramtail 35 Bully. It's a new scent infused formula. Woo. That has a weird smell. Uh, the color, I'm going to say it's a green pumpkin. So this would pair up really nice with that jig there. Uh, this right here, I there's I would say there's at least two ways you can rig this on, just rigging the hook straight through like a chunk, or you might have enough room to actually thread it on there. The way these legs are designed, you want to make sure you pull those apart so you get the most action out of these legs. That scent, it's a weird smell, but you know I'd have to try it out to see how well that scent is. And then you have the Z-Man uh, Billy Goat, and also in a green pumpkin. Now, Z-Man plastic is a last tech. Uh, you have to work with it to get them hooked on because of their plastic. But I've heard that once you get them on there, they're really, really good. They don't hardly tear up. You could probably use one lure all day long, one of these plastics, and you'll be good for the whole day. Again, make sure you pull those legs apart so you get the most action out of these lures. Uh, also with these lures, especially this goat, it's a very slim profile. If you guys can see that, that's a very slim profile. You could actually Texas rig this and fish this as a standalone lure, but it would pair up really, really nice with any type of jig that you got. Swim jig, uh, flipping jig, skipping jigs, you know. They would pair up really, really good with that. Uh, same places that you would a jig. The water depth, it varies. Because, again, you can fish this anywhere from uh, top water down to the bottom. Grass humps, ledges, tules or reeds, brush piles, open water, riprap points, docks, rocks, and trees. Uh, same setup, except uh, a 7 2 to 1 gear ratio reel. That is that medium-high speed reel. Uh, you're not going super, super fast, but then you're not super slow. You're in the medium, but you're a little bit more on the higher end side of a medium speed retrieve. So, you know, I would say on that end, personal preference, uh, if you're a shorter guy, you you might not want a larger rod because you don't want to seem like the rod is overpowering you and stuff. So, uh, fisherman preference, I'm going to say that, fisherman preference on your gear setup, but that's what six or monster bass suggests for their setups. Okay, next we have the chatterbait, and who better than Z-Man, the originators of the chatterbait? Uh, this one is a three-eighth ounce white, so automatically you should be thinking uh, shads. This is a shad pattern. Uh, Again, put you some kind of a trailer on here that imitates a shad. Uh, your water depth, it varies in water depth. Your cover that you want to throw this around. Grass, humps, ledges, out in open water, riprap points, docks, rocks, and trees. Uh, for the gear, 7.4, probably a medium heavy, uh, medium heavy action rod. 14 to 20 pound fluorocarbon, 6.3 to 1 gear ratio. This lure, to me, chatterbaits are just swim jigs with that blade on it. And pretty much you had the swim jigs and the fish got used to that. Somebody with Z-Man said, hey, let's put this blade on the front, give it a little bit different action, some vibration, a little bit of sound and some flash. Bam, new bait. Chatterbaits take over the world, and now just about every major uh, lure company out has their version of a chatterbait or a vibrating jig. So, awesome, awesome lure. You never can go wrong with those. And with these lures, it's almost like you also 
want to make sure you don't go too crazy with the colors. White, white chartreuse, something like that, some kind of a shad pattern. Um, green pumpkin or something like that, something that imitates a brim or a bluegill. And then your, your black and blues, so that dark water and stuff like that. That's probably about it. You don't need to get too carried away with all the other colors. Try to stick to the basics and you never can go wrong. So now we're talking top water, guys. Top water, we have the Yozuri 3DB pencil. It, this is a floating, this is your walking baits, uh, your Zera Spooks, stuff like that, your uh, uh, Strike King KVD Sexy Dogs. This is a bone color. Uh, fishing this around grass, humps, open water, riprap points, docks, rocks, and trees. 7, 8, uh, medium heavy rod, 40 pound braid, 8, 3 to 1 gear ratio. With this lure, the, the high speed reel is to take up your slack, but you're not moving. You're not moving this lure with the reel. All of your movement is going to come from your rod. For me, I would prefer mine to be either like a 6-6 six, six to 7 foot rod. Just because as you're working this lure, you're working the tip down. So you don't want to be sitting there banging on your the front of your boat or slapping the water. So I would lean towards a shorter rod for me to make sure I'm getting the right action in this. I probably wouldn't go no further than a 7 foot rod. Uh, the line and reel, okay, but the rod for me, 7 foot rod. And... This is a 9 16th ounce. So, I mean, this bone is a really, really good color. Uh, imitates a good shad, especially a fleeing shad that's trying to flee any kind of predator fish jumping on the top of the water. You know, again, when you're talking top waters and you see that blow up, even if it's not a blow up and they just come up and suck it down, you want to give at least a two to three second count before you try to set the hook so you're not yanking this lure out of the fish's mouth. So, also awesome lures. That early morning summer bite when the fish are up shallow, that's probably where you want to go. So, that's all they have as far as lures in the book. But, we're not done. So, we have the Monster Bass Rolo 6 crankbait. Uh, this dives down four to six feet. It's two and a half inches long, half ounce in weight. It's got the red katana hook on there as well as the feathered treble hook on the back. Uh, this is a green crawl pattern. So this one's called moss crawl. It's a, it's a, it's a smaller bill crankbait. So you're talking shallow water. So like I said, it's four to six feet deep. Uh, remember with crankbaits, uh, your line size will also dictate how deep you get this lure. I probably wouldn't go no lower than 10 pound uh, fluorocarbon on your lure. I mean your line, excuse me. Uh, 10 pound fluorocarbon is probably the lightest I would go with this. You can fish this around trees and stumps. You know, that bill will help deflect off of that stuff. So don't be afraid to bang these up against structure. Now, I wouldn't throw this like right in a bush because those treble hooks are going to get hung up pretty easy. But you do want to find those spots, the cover that the fish are most likely going to be gravitating towards and bump this thing off of some of that cover. You'll be surprised when those bites come. And then last but not least, most people think this lure is more of a cold water bait. We have a jerk bait. This is from Reaction Strike. This is their XRM 100 MD. This one is a translucent color, so you can see through it a little bit. Definitely a shad uh, pattern, as you can see the uh, the chartreuse line there going along the side. That bill is super super long. So for this one, it dives down six to ten feet deep. And the color is called spring blue. So if you, I don't know if you can see it through the package, but it has a little bit of a blue tint there on the top. And 
you know, in the winter time with a, a jerk bait like this, you would want to switch up your cadence to more of a longer pause. So, twitch, twitch, let it sit. Twitch, twitch, let it sit. Twitch, 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 let it sit. Stretch those pauses out to maybe five to eight seconds. Now, in the summertime, like what we have now, you can speed that up. And it doesn't always have to be the, the one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. You can switch it up. Uh, I was watching a video the other day of uh, Mark Daniels Jr., and he was actually talking about his jerkbait setup. And he was saying how in the summertime, he will twitch the hell out of that thing and then just kill it. And then he'll twitch it some more and then kill it. Like, you switch up the cadence. You don't always repeat the same cadence. But you just always want to remember that winter time, I would say winter and fall, start slowing down your cadence. Winter time, you want to be super, super slow. Spring and summer... Start speeding that cadence up. The fish are a little bit more active. They're chasing bait fish a little bit more. You got to get that bait out of there. Or at least make them think you're trying to get that bait out of there to get them to bite. So, you know, when that thing hits the water, reel it down to depth. And then start twitching that thing. And then let it die. And then start twitching it. Let it die. Start twitching it. Let it die. Uh, one of the other things that Mark Daniels touched on in his video when talking about the jerk bait is how this lure also pairs up really, really well if you have that forward-facing sonar. I don't have that. So right now, I'm still in that learning phase of learning the jerk bait, hoping that I'm in the right area with the fish, and then just learning how to fish the jerk bait. My personal setup, uh, Six Gill has a rod specifically for jerk bait fishing. It's called their Hem Doll. Uh, Hamdahl rod. It is the perfect size for fishing jerk baits because again, jerk baits you're fishing with a downward twitching motion. You don't want to be slapping your um, your boat or slapping the water. So I would look into that. Six Gill has done a really awesome job of creating rods specifically for a technique that you want to fish. And I would have to say that the Hamdahl rod is the perfect rod for fishing jerk baits just because of how it's designed and able to be fished. So, as always, when you sign up and get your Monster Bass box, you get a, a ticket that has a number. You tune in to Monster Bass on YouTube Thursdays, uh, 7 p.m. If they call out your number, then you get some kind of a prize. Uh, we have a card here for the fish angler app it says as a monster bass customer you get unlimited access to the largest fishing community in the world what's included find new fishing spots get local fishing reports know the best times to fish log book and catch status so this is pretty much like the um, uh, fish brain app only this one is called fish angler but it operates pretty much the same so pretty cool deal to get I think you guys can see that right there so and then as always we have a monster bass sticker you never can go wrong with the red white and blue old glory this is probably going to be one of my favorite monster bass stickers just because of that flag I got to find a special place to put this so that is all I have, guys, for this month's Monster Bass. Um, I am hoping soon to be able to get out on the water and do some fishing. I can't make any promises, guys, but I will do my best, and I will film it. And if you guys have hit the subscribe button, and you have also clicked on the notification bell and clicked all, you will be notified when I put that video out. So... Like always, if you guys like the video, smash the thumbs up button. Drop me some comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you got any other questions about things, I will do my best to answer them. I am not a professional by any means. I have never fished in a professional tournament to 
actually say, you know, have the title of a professional bass fisherman. I just love fishing and I love talking about fishing. So if you guys got questions, I will do my best to answer them or I will find out from somebody else and then I will get back to you guys and relay that information to you. So if you like the video, smash the thumbs up, leave comments, make sure you guys subscribe, make sure you click the notification bell, click all so you get notified every time I do my videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you guys one day out here fishing. But until then, until that time, guys be safe. See you all in the great outdoors. Bye.